these are the four main types of meditation that I really want you to understand because they are part and parcel of the meta journey of self-realization. They're going to be the most helpful aspects of how to use your attention, how to use yourself, your consciousness, that will lead to the greatest, most true results for you the fastest. Okay. So number one, the penetrative type of meditation. This style of meditation is the act of taking one's consciousness, or you could say attention, and inquiring, kind of questioning, but not so much intellectually questioning. It's, it's, it's even beyond, beyond philosophizing, although philosophizing comes closer. It's more like contemplation, like meditative contemplation. So when I say inquiring, I don't mean, oh, who am I? Well, I am this, I am that, da, da, da. I don't mean that you should activate your intellect too much or your thinking. So it's not a thought process so much, a little bit, but not so much. Um, so when I say inquiring, it's more a looking. It's a using your attention, harnessing your attention, your will, and then directing it to look in a certain direction or to look for a certain answer to a certain question. So it stays very raw, very direct, very immediate. It's not going out into conceptual thoughts. It's really looking, sensing, feeling, and penetrating. This style of meditation, penetrative, is the act of taking one's attention, consciousness, awareness, and inquiring or taking it within or looking into. So directing one's focus towards deeper levels of awareness beyond one's current, quote unquote, level of perception, beyond the ordinary day-to-day -day mode of experiencing thinking and so forth. So penetrative, that's why I've called it penetrative. And it's really what the experience is kind of like, like you're penetrating deeper levels, like you're piercing through the layers of the onion of falseness, closer and closer into pure and pure realizations of the truth of your essential beingness. This type of meditation, after some practice, can conjure up subtle sensations like a drilling or digging not really the drilling, but you know, like penetrating, piercing, or a, a digging, I'm digging deeper, I'm, I'm digging deeper, I'm scooping out the falseness, it's not this, it's not that, I'm digging deeper. Or a sense of looking beyond the horizon of what you know, into the unknown spaces beyond what you know. Because we're so used to just being distracted and automatically collapsing our attention onto what we already know and are familiar with, this whole landscape of assumptions and thoughts and feelings and memories. But penetrative meditation is the act of then looking for what's beyond that, gathering your will with the intention to get a greater sense, greater awareness of what's left of you, what's pure in you, what's true about you, beyond your current layers of assumption and perception because assumptions produce perceptions. It's almost like you're looking to illuminate the unknown, that area of yourself, that deeper mm, domain of I am, of consciousness, that you haven't illuminated yet before, where there's not yet a light, there's not yet an association, there's not yet a form, and so you call it the unknown. The unknown is actually very close and familiar to your true self. There is nothing unknown to the true self, but to the mind that's used to get its sense of who it is based on forms and ideas and shapes and objects and other people. If it takes a moment to pause all that and inquire into the beyond, initially it feels like an unknown. So penetration also is the act of looking into the unknown beyond the horizon of what you already know. This type of meditation requires the ability to concentrate one's will and attention, hence the first chapter of concentration and gathering your will, and then focus that on subtler levels of being or subtler levels of perception, subtler levels of awareness. It can also be done using inquiry into what is beyond one's current level of perception. So you can ask yourself such questions like, wait a second, I'm having this thought, that sensation, this memory, and it produces an ego effect 
meaning an effect. All those thoughts combined produce a sense, like a rainbow is produced by sunlight and water, but it doesn't actually exist. Yet it appears to be there. It distracts you. You can look at it and describe it. So it seems real, but it's not real. The ego, the separate sense of self is the same thing. So it operates in the same way. That's why I call it the ego effect, usually. So the ego effect or the sense of separate self effect is based on everything that you're just now subconsciously assuming and consciously sort of thinking about and observing. But if you pause that and you understand, okay, this is my current baseline average level of perception, my level of knowing myself through all these forms and ideas, and then ask yourself questions such as, but what am I, what is, what is me? You know, I always talk about me, always everything depends on me. I wouldn't have an experience without me. But what is this me? What is I? What is awareness? And then you go deeper into the pure existence experiences more and more. And those layers of falsehood will more and more dissolve, reveal themselves and dissolve. And then you're left with deeper and deeper penetrative, quote unquote, states or realizations of self. What is, what, so another way to inquire is, okay, what is more true than my current perception? What is more timeless is another angle for inquiry. So all this is moving and changing and there's a sense of time and motion, but what's actually not moving? Therefore, because time requires motion. What therefore is more timeless? Can I notice a more timeless sense of awareness or quality of being? All right, so that's the first main type of meditation when it comes to the path of self-awareness, self-awakening, self-realization, which is again the main path that I recommend because it's the most beneficial.